G'day Rugby League Tragics, in particular West Tigers Tragics. Uh, as mentioned last night, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, the West Tigers, uh, where they're at, uh, potentially where they're headed, and even a little bit about where they've been. And I can't think of a better uh, shirt to wear than one half of the joint venture, the mighty West's Magpies, uh, one of their... Uh, their replica t-shirts from back in the day. Um, and uh, I wear that with a bit of pride because it was my uh, my old man's team. So uh, although I'm a Bulldog supporter, I have a pretty rich history uh, surrounding the Western Suburbs Magpies. My very first game um, of rugby league that I, that I attended live uh, was I think around 1976-ish, 77 maybe, um, and it was West versus Newtown at uh, Henson Park. And I'll uh, always remember it because, uh, not that it really seemed out of the ordinary back then, um, but you drove the car up into the ground, up onto the hill, and you sat there and you, you sat on the bonnet of the car or in the car or whatever you wanted to do, and you watched the game of footy. So some wonderful memories from those times and um, obviously a, a fairly heavy reference to, to the West Magpies. Um, but the West Tigers, uh, so they joined the NRL competition in uh, the year 2000 after forming a joint venture between the Western Suburbs Magpies and the Balmain Tigers, who were both foundation clubs from 1908. Uh, now, obviously, there were people who didn't want the merge to go ahead. They would have preferred to see their, their own clubs continue to, to, uh, to run independently, but... By all accounts, it just wasn't going to happen. And um, so the merge was decided as the only option um, that would allow both clubs um, to, to maintain a presence within the NRL competition. And so it was formed. Now, for the first four years, uh, you know, no, no great success as such. But in 2005, they go on to win the premiership against a lot of the odds, and they beat the North Queensland Cowboys. And we still see highlights reels of the game today because of that flick pass from Benji Marshall to Pat Richards, and it was a, a fantastic um, a fantastic try and, and certainly very, very early in Benji's Mar Benji Marshall's career, and we now see where he's at. Um, and he's one of the very, very proud uh, players of the, uh, the West Tigers uh, club. Now, Benji Marshall... Uh, as a player, only ever played for the West Tigers. He didn't play for the West Magpies, nor did he play for the Balmain Tigers. And like Benji as a player, there are now supporters of the West Tigers club who are adults. They're 18 plus. And so they have only ever known the West Tigers as their team. They've only ever supported the joint venture. They never supported the West Magpies or the Balmain Tigers because they weren't born when those clubs existed. They've only been uh, born since the uh, the joint venture took place in 2000. So that's the only team they've ever known and supported, although they will more than likely be aware of a bit of the, the history and the background as to how the two clubs uh, came together. Um, they've only ever supported the West Tigers. So we need to bear that in mind uh, when I start to talk about... Um, you know, people that are still holding on to sentimental value. Um, I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit, but just bear that in mind. Um, and so where they're at at the moment, the West Tigers, look, um, I've got to be blunt. Uh, and again, you know, I'm open to criticism. People are going to say, well, who does this guy think he is? Where does he get his information? As I said, I... I'm just a supporter. I'm a fan like everybody else, like like all you guys out there. I'm, I'm a, a, a supporter of the game, a lover of the game, um, and I want to see nothing but good things happen to the game. But I have to say, I think the West Tigers um, are currently not of NRL standard in terms of their playing roster. Now, that's not to sound horrible, and as I've said before, anyone that's played one game of NRL has played one more game than me. So I'm not being critical um, of the players. Uh, and or if, if it sounds that way, I certainly don't mean to be. It's, it's no disrespect. But it is what it is. 
Um, there are players at the West Tigers club at the moment that wouldn't be playing first grade at other clubs. And I understand they've, they've had their injuries and they've had suspensions and the, and the like. But ultimately, they're not attracting the um, quality of player that they need to attract in order to attract other quality players. And I know that, um, you know, there's the old... Uh, uh, you know, the chicken or the egg, what comes first? Uh, you know, how do you attract other quality players to the team if you don't have one or two to start with? Well, you've got to do something to attract these players to the club. You've got to give them something that says, we want to go there and we want to represent this club. And it can't just always be money because money's, uh, they say money's not important, but geez, it's up there with oxygen. So anyone that says, that you know they're not incentivized by money um, is a liar because it's up there with oxygen. It makes the world go round. Let's face it. But it's not the be all end all. Some players will take less money to beat a more reputable club or a club that makes them happier or a club that's in a really nice location, maybe by the beach or in the eastern suburbs or whatever. So the West Tigers, uh, to give some context, they they train at Concord, they play games out of Leichhardt Oval and they play some games out of Campbelltown. Uh, they also play uh, the odd game out of Homebush. So there lies uh, the first problem. Uh, for me, the biggest issue surrounding the West Tigers at the moment, apart from their boardroom, which I'll come to in a minute, is their identity. Uh, I don't think they have a genuine identity yet and it's their own fault because they have not embraced the joint venture, the merger, um, from the people who were around pre-merger. There are still people on um, social media forums uh, on Balmain pages, absolutely giving it to the West Magpies. And then there are the people on the West Magpies page just giving it supreme back to the to the, uh, the Balmain Tigers cohort. So they are not coming together and embracing this team as it was meant to be. And I understand, look, as everyone out there knows, I'm a, I'm a Bulldog supporter now. I will always support the Bulldogs no matter what. Um, and people are going to say, well, what if they merge? Would you still support? Yes, I would. I'd support the merged variation of the Bulldogs, um, knowing that there is blood flowing through the veins of that team that comes from my club. So if the Bulldogs were to merge, no matter who they merged with, uh, if they merged with Parramatta, who's an arched enemy, right? An arch enemy, rival. But if they merged with Parramatta and that maintained an identity, then I'd be I'd be prepared to... I wouldn't, you know, would you be happy? No, you wouldn't be happy. But if it meant survival or supporting no one at all, um, I'd run with it. I would embrace it. Um, you, now, look, you're always going to have a period of, um, you know... People putting crap on each other. Oh, the, you know, my team and your team, and oh, I didn't want this. None of us want it. Nobody wants it, right? But you either adapt or you die. That's the the term, and that's metaphorically, of course. But that's what happens. You adapt or you die. So you you either embrace the change and you survive, or uh, you don't embrace it and you live a very miserable existence. And there are a lot of people out there now, Balmain and West supporters. And board members uh, and people who have influence that are living sad existences because they just can't let go. And I understand the sentiment of from those people and how they remember their, their great clubs and how they once existed in a standalone situation. But guess what? It's 23 seasons ago, so 22 years ago, but they're in their 23rd season this year. And they are now running none from their first five games. And it's actually the worst start in the club's history. Now, every club goes through a period of, of you know, of bad times. 
But the West Tigers have not made a final series for, I think it's the last 10 years now. And there's got to be a reason for it. And I think when you're looking for that reason, you've got to start at the pointy end. Um, I believe, um, and I'll go on the record as saying it now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the West Tigers are a basket case, and it starts in their boardroom. They, to me, again, I, I don't have any inside information. I don't have any anybody on the inside. It's only from what I see, hear, read, smell, touch, taste, right? They just don't seem to be able to... They've had so many issues over who's funding it. You know, well, the Magpies are actually putting all the money in because... The Balmain side of it's gone bankrupt and all these different leagues clubs and, and, you know, all. I understand that that's where the money comes from and that you've got to have that element, uh, you know, of support to keep the club going. But at the end of the day, uh, you've got to understand that fans want to come and see a successful team and they what they don't want to see is whinging, binge, bitching and bickering in the boardroom from a few old fuddy-duddies who can't move on. Now, what that means is, how do we fix that problem? Well, you need to get people in there that maybe aren't rugby league people. They're just business people. People that can say, okay, without any sentiment or emotion attached, this is what we need to do to improve this club. This is what we need to do to make it financially viable which will then give us enough money to attract key players, which will then allow us to attract other key players, which can then bring us some on-field success. If I hear one more person say that the West Tigers are rebuilding, I'll, I'll go nuts because they're not rebuilding. I don't think they've got a plan hatched. I can't see any indication that they know where they're headed. Even with Tim Sheens there acting as the uh, the coaching, uh, I don't know, his coaching coordinator, or he's he's there in a in an assist in, a, in a, an assistant capacity, and I don't think it's uh, so much as an assistant coach; it's just to assist the club in general, the football club. Great, great man, Tim Sheens, um, a wealth of knowledge, a fantastic coach, but I don't think he's going to solve any of the problems, and. When you've got your CEO, Justin Pascoe, going away, I, my understanding is, it's what I read, don't quote me, but for five weeks on a tour around the Northern Territory, when your team's none and five, I get that you've had COVID and you've had a couple of previous holidays fall over because of COVID, but guess what? Everybody has. And that's the world we're living in at the moment. And for me, he's only human. He's entitled to a holiday. So is his, his wife, right? However, it's a bad look. It's a really, really bad look. And if I'm Justin Pascoe, um, I'm saying, look, we need to wait till October, um, end of September. It's not like they're going to be playing finals footy. And we'll go on our holiday then. Because right now is not a good time. It's not a good look. And it's not a good look because it says, I don't really care. That's what it says to me. That he's not he's not too bothered uh, about the situation the club's in. And that says to me, if you're not prepared to, put, to make sacrifices in your own personal life, because that's what everybody does in rugby league, right? Players, coaches, even the fans, they make sacrifices for their clubs. And the fans expect to see a CEO of a club make sacrifices. But the one thing that's probably not a sacrifice in my eyes is just stay there till the season's over. Hang around, wait it out, be there, support your team. And now there's, I've heard arguments uh, through the media that, well, he's the CEO, he's not the coach, he's behind the scenes. Doesn't matter. He runs the joint, right? And I'm telling you now, the fish rots from the head 
down. So the problems at the at the very bottom of the West Tigers uh, ladder, which is the field and the and the performances on the on on, on the paddock, start up there with Justin Pascoe and his band of merry men and women because they are ultimately responsible for the day-to-day running of the club. They have people employed as specialists in their areas, i.e. Michael Maguire as the coach, um, they, James Tamao as one of the 17 captains. They, everyone's, got a, everyone's got a responsibility, right? His responsibility is the chief executive officer of the club. He runs the show. If it's raining, he needs to pop the umbrella up and keep everybody dry. That's what he does. So for him to go on holiday now is a really, really poor look. I'm sorry. But that is where the problems begin, the boardroom. They've got to get people in there who aren't necessarily... Look, if you can get people that can run a business and they can do it with a neutral mind and they cannot be emotionally involved in the outcomes and they're rugby league people, fantastic. But if you... Just get people in there that know how to run a business and set it up uh, and they're not rugby league people, then so be it. Just get someone in there that can do this. I think Justin Pascoe, I don't know the bloke. I've seen a couple of interviews with him. Seems like a nice bloke. But at the end of the day, I don't think he's doing the job. I don't think the people around him are doing the job. And I'll be criticised till the cows come home, as I said, because well, what would you know, right? What do you know? Well, I can tell you what I know. I know the results are poor, and there's a reason they're poor. The playing roster is weak. The coach is a pretty good coach, but he hasn't got a very good playing roster, and that's just a fact. And the reason he doesn't have a very good playing roster is because nobody wants to go to the club. They're getting players from other clubs that aren't wanted by other clubs, and there's reasons why they're not wanted by other clubs, and I'm not going to name names. You know who they are. But ultimately, they're not attracting the type of clientele as a player that is going to attract other players. And that starts in the boardroom. End of story. Now, on the field, look, Luke Brooks is copying it left, right and centre. I don't think it's fair. I think the majority of people would agree it's not fair. However, there are reasons why he's copying the criticism. Number one, like it or not, he has been the halfback for the last nine, ten seasons. And in that time, they have not made a final series. Now, in fairness to Luke Brooks, there are 16 other players out there on the field every week with him, and there's a squad of 30 uh, every year um, to choose from. He can't be completely responsible for uh, the on-field performances. But I'll say this. I think he's a, he's, I think he's a better player uh, than, than his results indicate. And I also think unequivocally, that he's he's paid as a much better player than his performances would indicate. So um, the other thing I would say about Luke Brooks is that, you know, he's saying, well, some people haven't played the game. Who gives them, an, you know, who, who gives them an opinion? Who lets them have a say? They've never even played the game. Well, I've only ever played park footy, as I say, and not very well. But the reality is this, we support the game, we pay memberships, we go to games and, and, and watch them, we pay for um, uh, TV subscriptions, you know, the Foxtels, the KOs and all those things in order to be able to watch our team. So I've got news for you, Lukey, I've got an opinion and I'm entitled to it, mate. And so are your, so are your fans, right? Now, you can say, well, oh, I'm not going to listen to those opinions, they mean nothing to me and that's, you, mate knock yourself out, you're entitled to that. You're entitled to not listen to those people with opinions that you don't think should have opinions. But I'll tell you now, mate, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And I think as long as people keep them um, polite, diplomatic, and all that sort of stuff, uh, and, and don't make them personal, then I think everybody should be entitled to have their say. And in the case of the West Tigers, they are abysmal from the boardroom to the paddock. And unfortunately, Luke Brooks is part of that equation. Like it or not, he's part of the equation. He, by his own admission, does not want to be at the club. Why do I say that? Because in the pre-season, 
he asked for a release to go to the Newcastle Knights and he was denied. The West Tigers board said, no, you are our primary playmaker and we're not letting you go. So he wanted out. And now he's sort of saying, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy. Where I... It's the worst start in the club's history, none and five. Anyone who's saying they're happy at the West Tigers now is a liar and no one's buying it. So as much as you can't apportion all the blame to one player, and in this case, Luke Brooks, bearing in mind you've had the Benji Marshalls and the Robbie Farrers and, and players of that ilk at the club in that time where they haven't made the semis as well. So, you, you know, again, you've you got to say, well, you know, some of those guys haven't haven't uh, perhaps contributed as, as we would have hoped either. But, look, they've had different coaches. They've had Michael Potter. Uh, they've, they've had Ivan Cleary for a period of time. Nobody really wants to be there. Uh, and when I say nobody wants to be there, I'm talking about quality coaches and quality players. Because if they wanted to be there, they'd be there, right? But they're not. Now, Michael Maguire finds himself in a very unenviable position, which is coaching uh, a group of players who aren't the standard uh, that you would expect from an NRL player in some cases. Some of those players that, that have been NRL standard in the past are not performing to an NRL standard now. And I think that uh, bringing back Jackson Hastings this week, as Michael Maguire has done, and you had to you had to get him straight back into the side. He's been out for three weeks under suspension. You had to get him straight back into the side, and you had to give him um, uh, a, a, a role uh, that was going to see him get his, his hands on the ball. Now he's put him in the number seven, and he's moved Luke Brooks to the number six. And I'm no I'm no Craig Bellamy, right? But I don't see that that's going to make a, a heck of a lot of difference to the West Tigers, what I'd probably be looking to do, if it was me, is I'd probably keep Hastings at 5'8", I'd get Jock Madden in at halfback, and I'd look to move uh, Brooks to maybe Hooker, or even the bench, and uh, Jacob Little maintains the hooking role, or he comes off the bench. So I'd, I'd be, that, to me, is going to give Luke Brooks time to breathe and give him time to, to watch what's going on and, and see the game from the sideline and give him an opportunity to, to form a plan. Um, if he's not starting the game uh, or if he's, if he's coming off for a break during the game, he's going to have time to, to assess. Now, the argument there is, and it's always going to be a problem, and it's you know what? It's not Luke Brooks' problem. It's not Michael Maguire's problem. It's the board's problem. They've paid the kid 950000 a year, and they're not going to want to see him spending any time on the sideline, on the bench, coming off the interchange, unless he's injured, right? Well, you're going to have to swallow your pride, people, because I think he's, he's going to be best serving the team by coming off the interchange, slotting in to... Uh, you know, uh, a hooker roll uh, exchange with, with Little um, uh, and then being able to drop into the half 5'8 spot if there's an injury to Hastings or um, Jock Madden. That's my opinion uh, because you're keeping him involved but you're giving him time to breathe physically and metaphorically. So that's what I'd be doing. That's That's me. Now... The other thing I'd be doing is I think the West Tigers, look, I don't think they're going over the top with their their, their their plays, but I think that they are trying to maintain a standard of all NRL clubs, which is this cookie-cutter, boring second phase out the back play. It's got better in the last year or two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, but it's just boring to watch. It's the same old, same old. Everyone's doing the same thing. Give me a coach who's prepared to say, I'm going to mix this up and I'm going to do this a little bit differently, okay? And quite frankly, I think Michael Maguire needs to be that coach. Michael Maguire needs to understand that trying to coach uh, a game plan that the Melbourne Storm and the Roosters are executing uh, very well because of the quality of players they have is not going to work with the quality of players you have. And so you need to really strip it back to basics. Now, I'm talking dummy half scoots. I'm talking one up, one up, a little bit wide of the ruck. Get that opposition defence 
backpedaling because it doesn't matter how fit you are. If you're going backwards every time the other team's got the ball, you're running out of petrol. And it's very, very hard to get it back. Now, then you've got to start looking at repeat sets. So keep them backpedaling. Imagine a game of touch footy. For those that have been around touch footy or Oztag and know how that works, you're just constantly working the other team back, working them back, working them back, working them back, and they get tired. And if you can do that and then get a repeat set of six, so you might be doing it for two or three sets of six, they're buggered, right? Buggered. And that gives an average team like the West Tigers half a chance to compete. And then the other thing you've got to be really, really good at, really, really good at, and every team should be, this should be their primary focus, is defence. You've got to defend really well. Because if you stop teams scoring, then there's, you don't need to score as many points yourself. But here's the thing. By the time you get to NRL level, your coach should not be teaching you the fundamentals of, of how to tackle. They should be saying to you, you know, slide this way or slide that way and I want you to stand here in defence or I want you to be there. But the fundamentals of how to actually tackle, if you don't know them by the time you hit NRL or even SG ball, you probably shouldn't be there. And that's not your fault if you are. That's the, that's the guy's picture. You know, let's not hate the player. We're going to hate the game here. If there are players that are playing at this standard that aren't good enough and they can't do the simple fundamental basics, that's not their fault. They've gone through a system that hasn't taught them these things. And, and, and the responsibility for that lies with coaches and, and, and trainers and, and all those people, right? So at the moment, the West Tigers look lost. They look lost in attack. They look lost in defense. And I know that's rich coming from a Bulldog supporter. I put my hand up. That's the pot calling the old kettle black there. Don't worry about that. But... That's the reality. The West Tigers look lost in attack and they look lost in defence. And they're lost in attack because they're trying to maintain this cookie-cutter style of, of, of game plan that the Roosters and, and, and the, the Storm and the Sharks and all those handy teams are, can execute and execute reasonably well, some of them brilliantly. But the West Tigers don't have that talent, as I just said. So they need to, to strip it back to basics suck up their pride, and in the process, I would love to see Michael Maguire, rather than see that as uh, going backwards and, and him feeling like he's not worthy as an NRL coach, see it as, as being an ambassador, see it as being a crusader, seeing as creating a, an evolution, right, of change. You're the man doing it. You've said enough of this. I'm going to do this. And if that means three dummy half, four dummy half runs in a set of six to backpedal the defence and then, you know, get an early kick away and pin them down and then you then you, you get your defence right and you, and you... Then that's what you need to do. And you know what? That's the basics of rugby league. And the problem is, and the West Tigers aren't the only team, the Bulldogs are the same and there's others, they're not doing the basic fundamentals. They feel like they've got to keep up with the Joneses, right? In this case, the Storms and the Roosters and, and all those teams. They've got to, oh God, we've got to keep up there doing that. And, and so we need to do that. Well, you don't. Pioneer your own game. And that's really what I think the West Tigers need to do. They've got to defend. They've got to learn how to defend. They know how to tackle, right? But you've got to learn how to defend. You've got to learn where to stand. You've got to know when to rush up and you've got to know when to move back. And you've got, right, all those basic, that, that's what the coaching staff's there for. You've got to know where to position your players in, in the defensive line. If you've got a little half back who keeps getting uh, David Fafita running over the top of him, well, news flash, probably time to move him out a bit wider and put him in front of a bloke who's more his own size and get a bigger bloke in front of Fafita. It's not rocket science, right? In attack, again, simple, simple football. Who cares if it's boring to watch? I said it before. I'd rather win a boring game of footy than lose a spectacular one. And you know what? The fans will not hate you for it. Because if they see two points every week or every other week playing simple, basic football, but original football, versus trying to keep up with the Joneses and play this expansive style of football that you just can't, you just can't manage it. You just don't have the ability. And as I said, there are teams out there with plenty of ability that still don't get it right. What hope have you got? You're fair, right? So 
That's what they've got to do. The West Tigers are going to go back to absolute basics. They've got to play players in the correct positions. Look, you've got Jock Madden there as a young bloke coming through. And I can tell you now, if they persist playing Luke Brooks at halfback, even though he's not playing well, just because he's on 950 a year, Jock Madden will be at another club next year or the year after. Whenever he's con- He'll be at the Broncos or he'll be at the Redcliffe Dolphins or he'll be down somewhere, right? Because he's not going to sit back and bide his time uh, if he knows the guy in front of him is not playing good football. Different if you've got Daly Cherry Evans in front of you or you know, uh, Jerome Hughes or one of those guys, that's different. You've got to bide your time, you know? Um, like when Cooper Cronk was running around for, for Melbourne, you know, blokes just had to bide their time. Cameron Smith, you know, that's what the Cheese had to do. And, and, and Harry Grant went and spent some time at the West Tigers because he was biding his time, right? And that's what you've got to do. But when the guy in front of you is playing average football at best... And you know you, you've got something to offer and you're young and you're enthusiastic and you want to get out there and learn and show what you can do and you're not getting that opportunity because they're continuing to play the likes of Luke Brooks just because he's Luke Brooks just because he's on nearly a million bucks a year and it's an ego thing, it's all about pride and all that. Well, when someone knocks on your door and says, Hey mate, you're interested to come into the Redcliffe Dolphins, you better believe I am, mate. And this is another issue the West Tigers are going to have. So I would be, as I said, I'd be getting Brooks either off the bench or start him at hooker and interchange him with uh, Jacob Little. And then I'd be looking to have Hastings and Jock Madden in the halves and I'd give them a good, solid month of letting them work it out. And then I'd be saying to the centres, right, centres and second rowers these days are are ultimately the same thing. So in defence, you've got four second rowers, really. So get in there, get up, move in, umbrella defence, whatever works for you, but get in there... Don't just sit back and watch. You've got to get up and you've got to be enthusiastic. You've got to have something to get up for in the morning, right? And I don't think they got it in the West in the West Tigers camp. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is this, and this is going to really ruffle some feathers, right? But I, I don't care because it, it needs to happen, right? The West Tigers have just spent, I don't know, copious amounts of money, by their standards anyway, on a centre of excellence at Concord. Now, that centre of excellence uh, looks to be okay, but my understanding is, it's from what I can see, it's demountable buildings and, and, and that sort of structure. It's not like it's a you know fully built uh, brick, brick structure or anything like that. Where am I going with this? Yes, it's cost them money, but they need ASAP, and I mean ASAP, to get out of there. They need to get into Campbelltown. They need to set up shop in the MacArthur region. And that's where they need to, 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 to play and to train and do everything. They've got a beautiful stadium out there at Campbelltown now. It used to be called Arana Park, right? When I played on it, uh, it, it, was, it was like playing on concrete, right? It was, wasn't flash. But as the years have progressed, uh, it's, it's become a wonderful little ground. They've got their own uh, soccer team out there or, or football team for those enthusiasts. Uh, it's a really it's a, it's a little hub in the MacArthur area for sport, and the West Tigers are not capitalising on it. And I'll tell you why they're not capitalising on it because they're all trying they're, they're looking at Concord as Switzerland, Switzerland between the inner western suburbs of you know Leichhardt and Five Dock and the Balmain type area, and then Ashfield and and those areas where the West Magpies and the and the Balmain Tigers originated, so that they're trying to keep Con- Concord's kind of just keeping everyone happy. Um, and the poor old people of Campbelltown, and I'm not saying that there aren't there isn't uh, a level of support uh, or support a base in in you know the inner western suburbs around Balmain and, and and Ashfield, right? I'm not saying they don't exist, and I'm not saying they don't deserve to have a team to support. But the reality is you've got to go where the majority is. You've got to go where your future is. You've got to go where the juniors are. And it's in MacArthur. And the MacArthur region borders onto Parramatta. It borders on to Wollongong. It borders, it goes right down the Southern Highlands and it borders on to, you know, uh, really uh, the Southern Tablelands with uh, Crookwall and Goulburn who are just rich, rich rugby league regions. And you're surrounded Right, 
there's even, you know, you go towards Norellan and places like that and you're starting to nudge on Penrith territory. And if you've got the right people, you, the, the, the right people doing your scouting and, and, and looking for junior talent, you'll pick them up. But if you just look at the MacArthur region itself, it's it's thriving with, with junior talent. And I'll tell you now, if you're not there, I don't care if you're sticking the odd talent scout in the in the area, if you're not there, you're not based, you're not set up, you're not seeing it all. And quite frankly, they're not seeing it all. So they've got to get themselves set up in Campbelltown, in the MacArthur region, play the majority of their home games out of Campbelltown, play the odd one at Homebush if they have to because you know, the, it clashes with other sports or whatever. But, you know, that again, that's something that the, the administration people should be sorting out. And play a couple of games a year at Leichhardt. Because at the moment, they're playing the majority of games at Homebush or Combank or wherever they're playing them. They're playing a, a couple of pretty good good quality games at Leichhardt. And I'm sorry to say, but they're playing rubbish games at Campbelltown saying to the people of MacArthur, you're not worthy, and they're playing them against teams like the Warriors, the Cowboys, and the Titans, and that's nothing against those teams. It's just the fact that there's no atmosphere there because there's not many supporters from those clubs will come to watch those games because of the tyranny of distance. So ultimately, you go to a West Tigers game at Campbelltown, the majority of your fans are West Tigers fans, so the atmosphere is already lacking. And then... um, and, and, of course, then you, you're probably almost halving your potential crowd. You stick a Parramatta game in there, you stick a Bulldogs game in there, a Dragons, a Penrith, you know, but they're putting these games in. And what it says to me is the people of MacArthur aren't important. They don't mean anything to us, right? And I'm starting to, I'm starting to sound a bit like Tommy Renonica's and the Fibros. Or, right, mate, we're going to get out there and bash them. But you know what? There's an element of truth there, I believe. I think they see the MacArthur region as one that, you know, it's just battlers and will they turn up to watch us? And, and that you know, I've heard them say, oh, they don't come to watch us play. Well, you know what? When you put the Cowboys, Titans, Warriors and teams like that on, um, it's hard to, to get people off the lounge and, and come out to watch it, right? Because for all the reasons I just said. So in a nutshell... That's what they need to do on the field. They need to go back to absolute basics, right? They need to get Luke Brooks into a, into a space where he's got time to think, okay? And for me, that's hooker. Coming off the bench even, as I said, interchanging with Jacob Little. Hastings and um, Jock Madden in the halves. That's, that's for me, right? They've then got to get themselves out to Campbelltown, set up in that MacArthur region, there's plenty of space out there. They were once the the the, uh, the primary sport in the Macarthur region, and probably the the largest supported sporting team. And I can tell you now, it'll be the, it'll be the soccer team now. We'll have the largest support in Campbelltown. Uh, but as they say, if you build it, they will come. So stop putting shit games of footy on at Campbelltown when you do play there. Give them some quality to go and watch, and therefore attract those supporters from those other clubs as well. Give them a Bulldog game. Give them a Parramatta game. Uh, throw them a bone every now and again. And then get out to Campbelltown and get in and train there so kids can turn up and watch the training. Who's going to Concord, mate? I'll tell you. No one. And then the board needs to be booted, punted, get rid of the board. Because ultimately, if you're going on holidays when your team's none and five, I really, mate, speaks volumes to me. It says everything it needs to say. And really, people don't need me to sit here and tell them how ordinary that looks. We know. So sort your book, get the get rid of the board, start again. And I'd and I'd have Tim Sheens in there running that that uh, that delivery of that that outcome. Get it right I'd have him heavily involved in there. Um I'd also say that Michael Maguire is probably headed out the door, the poor bastard. I don't think it's his fault, but I think that's kind of probably where I don't think he's going to see out the month, let alone the season, which is a real shame. But if he, if he can get those players in those positions and just get a couple of wins over the next, even two wins over the next six weeks, I think would start to satisfy the West Tigers supporters a little bit. 
Uh, you don't want to get to the point where, like, with Bulldog supporters, where just not getting flogged was seen as a good result because that's just that's just accepting mediocrity, right? That's rubbish. But having a couple of good, genuine wins, and as I said, they don't have to be uh, fancy wins. Win ugly, just win, right? And I think they can do that if they if they move those players around in those positions. Again, I'm no super coach. I'm no Wayne Bennett. Just my opinion. But you know, I've only coached junior rugby league. Uh, you know, I'm no guru, but. I know one thing that basics work and I think that's where they need to go. And I think if Madge can get some results in the next month, two to three weeks, if he's around long enough, just going back to basics and maybe moving those players around, I think he'll be, uh, it'll serve him well. And then they've got to start to build, put a timeline in place and say, right, we've spent this money, but you know what? Bad luck. We're out. We've got to go to Campbelltown. We've got to do it um, for all those reasons that I've mentioned. And there's probably a stack more, but, I think they need a three-year maximum plan to transition out to Campbelltown and make MacArthur their home, and forget all the rubbish about oh, that's just you know that's now um, you know there's an element of of, of uh, preference to the West Magpies and the poor people of the inner West are missing. No, it's the West Tigers. It's not the Balmain Tigers anymore, and it's not the bloody West Magpies anymore. And the fact that the best place for them to be just happens to be where the West Magpies played out of, which is the MacArthur region, Campbelltown, well, that's just the way it is. But do you want what's best for this club, or do you want to keep infighting and carrying on with all this rubbish and continuing to, to see this happen? Because... The North Sydney Bears and the Northern uh, and the Manly Seagulls, uh, that was never a merge. That was a it was a takeover. So I don't count that when I say that there hasn't been a, a merged uh, entity that's failed. I mean, you could argue that they have, but it was uh, Norths were never. It was never a 50-50 joint venture. Manly took it over. Manly never wanted to merge with Norths, and Norths died a sad death as a result of that and have now come back in their own um, form in the lower grades. But I'll tell you now, the West Tigers will be the, 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 the first genuine merger to become extinct if they don't sort their shit out. And it's going to happen. And it might not happen in the next two years or five years, but in 10 years, if they keep going like this, they won't exist. And it's a real shame because it won't just be performance-based, it'll be financially because money comes in because of how you perform on the field ultimately. And uh, I think it's it's going to be a dismal existence um, and, and, and potentially uh, they're going to be gone if they don't sort things out soon anyway i've gone on for 43 minutes um apologies for that but i'm passionate about it uh because i, I don't want to see any team uh um struggle uh but particularly when they don't have to you know and it just annoys me that people that are getting paid big money to sit there with suits and ties in a boardroom and run the joint i and again, you can argue all you want that I don't know what I'm talking about and I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but I know what I know from results. And the results are rubbish for 10 years. Rubbish. I mean, in that time, we've seen Cronulla win a comp. We've seen the Cowboys win a comp. Um, you know, no excuses, really. So again, if you're going to chip, don't forget to chase. I'll see you guys next week. Have a great Easter Go the doggies today. They're specials to beat the Rabbitohs. I'm telling you, they're going to win by four. I think 18-14, uh, the dogs. Uh, enjoy your footy, turtles.